Welcome to Sell Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund, and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, and make the dance floor, country, and skate dress of your dreams. Christina and I today are going to be talking about her ball gown and these gorgeous gathers on the neckline, as well as beautiful lace that's used on the bodice and the bracelets. What types of events would you wear this ball gown for? So I'm actually wearing this to compete pro okay. uh, for smooth, or I have been. So I'm, I'm actually due for a new dress uh, here pretty soon, but um, this is what I've been competing in. All right, and it's beautiful. It's a great color on you, and I love several elements about this, the gathers and the lace and the rhinestones in particular. This is a polyester charmeuse. It's kind of... Um, Unfortunately, Europeans have a hard time finding charmeuse, according to folks in my sewing school, which is a bummer because it's one of my favorite fabrics. It has just a little bit of sheen to it. It's not overly shiny. It tends to not wrinkle a whole lot, and um, it's, it's great. The gathers up here are made with the same fabric, which is not necessarily easy to do because this is a stretch area with a non-stretch fabric so a lot of times i will cut my fabric on the bias if i want to do these gathers but i think they did a beautiful job and curiously because you're quite a bit larger busted than i am generally i think of gathers as adding volume to the bust line this actually does not which you can see in these other pictures because we filmed several videos with christina so Part of one of the things that I teach people is that even though there are, quote, rules, that doesn't mean the rules apply all the time, which can be maddening. So I I think this is a really great neckline on you. This is your the first one that's a halter, is it? Yeah, it's the first halter. Okay, so maybe it's the halter that actually minimizes the bust line, whereas the gathers traditionally gathers right. will make one look larger whether it's the tummy or the hip or the wherever so maybe it really is the halter it is very lengthening for sure mm -hmm. because my eye wants to go all the way up from the top of her head and just sort of bounce down not flow down because it's broken up with rhinestones and there's textural changes but it literally goes bounce bounce then smooth and, and that's a really cool way to create texture, different um, lighting, lights and shadows. And if you would, do a slow spin, please, ma'am. So wide open back. For a lot of people, that would be too much. You could come in and do the entire bodice in lace if you have an open back and you want to cover it some. That certainly works, and that way it looks like the addition would be built into the dress as opposed to just an add-on. And then you brought up an interesting fact where um, these bracelets look beautiful. You said there used to be upper armbands, except uh, every time I flex my arms, they <laughs> okay, <laughs> like almost comically. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, so there's definitely no point in wearing them. But I actually think this dress doesn't need upper armbands. I think this is very elegant, and having bracelets is perfect because it's just kind of subtle jewelry. Whereas with the upper arm bands, it would make this dress look more um, harsh, more Latin-y, mm -hmm. instead of just keeping it really beautiful and elegant. However, that does bring us to the lace and the rhinestone. So part of the reason that your upper arm bands were popping off is because one, they don't stretch because of the lace, and two, because of the closure system. So you can see in this photo that I took of the inside of her bracelets, there's this combination of snaps and hooks, and I do recommend a combination. Go ahead. I actually, when it was first designed, it was actually just snaps. Oh. I actually added the hooks after the facts because I kept popping out of everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> so good, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, double club. I mean, skaters have had meltdowns with the hooks yeah. and snaps coming undone, like on the Olympics even. So it's, and it's not acceptable. All you have to do is just double up. Do a combination of hooks and snaps as opposed to all one thing. And if you do do hooks, make your hooks go the opposite direction so that you can get double security, especially if it's something like a halter neck or anything that actually holds the girls in. You don't want to have your body parts falling out. 
<laughs> when you're performing, it's just not good. Not good. Another option that you could do when making bracelets out of a non-stretch fabric, such as this really pretty lace, is that you can actually cut the lace into sections. And that way there's a section and a section and a section and the fabric can stretch in between the lace pieces so that it could still give and be less prone to flying off. Um, I think this is beautiful. You have jewels on a lot of your dresses. I do. Yeah, I, <laughs> I like jewels. I think it adds, in this case, she's got, what are these, like um, 12 millimeters, something Stairs, like that? Something like that. Yeah. Um, squares, love them. You've got some little bitty tiny navettes in here. I like this little opening. Um, I actually almost forgot to talk about it until you bent over and it started gaping <laughs> which the dressmaker and me screamed oh no that should not be happening so much <laughs> so let's talk about that not plan just Dress dressmaker tip coming in so laces because we were going to talk about it laces are very useful just for having an easy rhinestone pattern they're a breeze to rhinestone you don't have to think about oh what am i going to do because it's so much faster because you just use the lace as your guide it's great now um let's talk about this little keyhole opening it's almost no there's not elastic in there i would put elastic because i don't want it to gape now it's always if i do this it's always just like regular shirts your fabric is going to go tighter or looser depending on how you move. However, with as much as that was opening, it definitely would benefit from elastic. And you would want to do pretty much very minimal elastic up at the points because the points look great. And then you would want to do a fair, quite a lot of elastic in the middle so that it kind of goes whoop and it makes it want to hug your skin. And it would be less prone to gaping anytime you do like, you know, like forward movements. You can do this when it's being made, if you make your own dresses, or it could just be tacked in right now, actually. Get some flesh-colored elastic. I've got a vlog on how to dye elastic flesh color, so you can check that out. And yeah, just go in and, and you would just hand tack it at the points, and then of course in the middle, with just lots of stretch in the very center to get it to hug in there nicely. Anything that you like a whole lot about this dress or dislike? One of the things that's a little bit interesting about this dress, and I, I kind of loosely designed this dress, and then I had um, Gosha, the judge. Okay. She actually is responsible for this dress many moons ago. Okay. Um, one of the things that's a little bit interesting is that the cups sit much higher than my natural form. Hmm. It, so it's a little bit interesting because I essentially have to lift everything into it, and I don't know if that was purposely to like make me longer, or if that was just something that happened. From a design perspective, the reason, one reason that that could be useful, visually useful, not necessarily comfortable, but visually useful, is the more distance you have from the tip of your bust to your waist, the better. You tend to look taller and slimmer on average. So if, let's say there's a very large breasted woman who his breast sits very low and there's not much room between the waist and the bust, then she will often look shorter and heavier. So in that case, it is very good to try to lift the breast tissue as much as possible. However, you have a pretty good, I mean, like if there's your belly button, you've got really quite a lot of room from the tip of the bust to the waist. So that would not necessarily have been the reason there. Yeah, I don't know. I just... <laughs> Who knows? But yes, otherwise, I like, and you can wash this dress. It feels like everything is washable. Have you washed it? I haven't, actually. I'm okay. scared. Yeah, no, it's polyester. It should be perfectly fine. Um, a lot of times when I'm washing, I'll just put it in a, in a very large bin or in the bathtub mm -hmm. with just room temperature water. And um, you can scrub all the armpits and other all stinky bits. Stuff, yeah. Yep, and then just let it hang dry. And yeah, it will it won't affect the gathers at all because the gathers are tacked in once you as you're pinning your gathers, every time you put a pin in it is where a tack needs to go so that it maintains its gathers and looks all or ruching is the other word. It looks all nice and even that way. So you can control it. But it won't shouldn't negatively negatively affect anything. 
Yes. But if you would do one more spin, please, ma'am, and I think we are good. I love the gathers on this. Love the lace. I think it's really beautiful on you. Electric blue is one of my favorite colors on the floor. It looks good on a lot in a lot of ballrooms. So yes. So thank you, Christine, for being here. Thank you. Yep. Thanks to everybody at Spotlight Ballroom in West Sacramento, California, for letting us take over the studio. We've been here a while. <laughs> you will see her in several dresses. And um, that's it. So yeah, if you have enjoyed today's video, please share it with all of your dancing, skating, sewing friends. Go to Sew Like Pro, leave me your name and email address. I'll make sure you get my newsletters and extra dressmaker tips that are perhaps not on the video or just not in video format. If you're watching this on a video channel, subscribe so that you don't miss any of the videos. And I do believe that is it. Thank you so much again, and thank you for being here, and we'll talk to you again another time. Bye! So Christina, tell me a little bit about your studio, Spotlight Ballroom in West Sacramento, California. Um, we're a really welcoming, very friendly, very inviting community of dancers. I think that's one of the things that we really pride ourselves on. And when we have students move away, that's what they always say they miss. So, yeah. And then with them. the whole COVID situation, you've begun teaching in person and you offer online classes. Too. Yeah. So the thing that's really exciting is now because we're all on Zoom, uh, we offer classes on Zoom as well, so all those students can actually take lessons. So right now we have students in Oregon, we have students in Southern California, we have some students in New Mexico um, who are taking classes with us, so that's really nice. Very cool. So go to spotlightballroom.com, the link is below, and check it out. Because a lot of times finding a teacher is like finding a hairstylist. <laughs> it, 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 you really have to, it has to be somebody that you jive with personality wise and that has you know just sort of speaks your language and i think having so many studios be online now has really opened up a lot of that